Hey guys, Captain Dave. Uh, just checking in with you here. I, I'm going to do my vlog tonight um, right here in front of the camera. Um, I, might, I might throw some other things up. I've got, I've got some footage uh, uh, from some fishing and whatnot. But uh, I, I, I've, I've had a couple of experiences here recently involving schooling fish. And, uh, and more and more as I've gotten more experience and I kind of know what to look for. Uh, that that whole experience has happened more often <laughs> anyway but I have very quickly figured out one thing and that is that you have to you have when you're fishing uh, in areas and I'll, and I'll be real straight up straight up with you here if you if you fish uh, anything as you head towards um, I guess I, I don't know what shore I as you fish the outside as you head towards North Shore towards Harney Pond from Cluiston as you head in that direction, you're going to get to places like uh, the Shoal in particular. The Shoal is probably the best place, uh, as a matter of fact. But the Shoal, uh, outside of uh, uh, Cochran's um, and, and what have you, and, and as you work, you know, tar towards Harney Pond, um, you're going to you're going to fish a lot of times the outside grass. And you're going to be working along, but you're always going to need to keep one eye open. Um, for the potential for schooling fish, and, and in fact, Rob, Rob and I, Rob from Lunkers uh, TV, and I, when we were fishing, we were actually in the uh, Uncle Joe's Cut area in the Hog Pen area, um, when when we had hit all those fish on on a schooling situation, and it's simply a matter of looking up and going, oh my gosh, there's a there's a bass chasing, and I'm gonna tell you something now, a, a, having a bass roll on the surface is not doesn't look the same as a bass that's busting shad. Um, there's just more of a continuation in a line. You'll see a you'll see a commotion, but then you'll see a dee -dee -dee, you know kind of a thing. You like my little noise effects there, but uh, you'll see and and you'll realize that it's bass chasing shad. And oftentimes, oftentimes you might just see one or two of that. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll have this crazy um, um, busting of shad all over the place and shad flying out of the water, although that's fun. But but it doesn't necessarily that isn't necessarily what you see. Sometimes it's just a little maybe one or two of those and that's enough to go holy Christmas it's go time and and here's the deal there are five baits when you're fishing uh, a pattern where you're looking for something like that there are five baits you need to keep on your deck and uh, and I'm gonna tell you the rationale here is that first of all you never really know what the fish is gonna hit um, and when you get that fish jumping um, you absolutely you absolutely need to make sure that um, that you're ready with some baits that you can throw at them, because you got to get one to bite. If you can get a fish to bite, uh, and that's and it's not automatic, um, but if you can get a fish to bite, um, it's it's on. And and then it just seems like the school gets excited, and it's just and it can just become fish after fish. Make four or five casts, boom, another fish. Make two or three casts, boom, another fish, and then boom, 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 and then. And then, and, and so on. But the reason you got these five baits is, first of all, these are my the five baits that I think are most important. Is that first of all, um, you need to figure out what they're going to hit right away and what what they're most likely to hit. And uh, and once you have that going, it's just a matter of changing up and changing up and changing up. As the you know, if you if you make six casts and don't get a bite, and you're by yourself, just pick up another bait. Pick up one of these five baits. Um, and uh, and so here they are in no particular order and no brand name or anything along those lines it's just simply enough here they are and number one and this is the one i usually start with and you can hear it in the background <laughs> number one is a, is a rattle trap no just a rattle rattling a lipless uh crankbait of some sort and guys I, you know i'm this i'm holding a rattle trap here but i'm going to say a couple things first of all I like the whites and the silvers. I like a blue back on Lake Okeechobee, but you know that's that's just me personally, um, and it's what I've had some success with. Um, but I also I'm holding a, a one ounce trap here in my hand. This is a big one, and uh, uh, and and sometimes that can be the ticket. But I'm going to tell you more often than not, I like to throw a smaller one. Um, you know the half ounce or even the quarter ounce, um, and 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 I, I think the quarter ounce in the rattle trap is actually a little small. But, but I do like the smaller size and some of the other lipless crankbaits that are out there. Um, uh, I know I've got a bone color in my boat that's just kind of an off-white that's, that's absolutely fantastic um, and, and whatnot. But again, I'm not really concentrating on type or lure manufacturer here as I am. You better have a lipless crankbait, and you better be ready to sling that baby a long ways. Um, and mix up your retrieve. You know, steady, not a, no bite. No bite with a steady. 
you know, then maybe you need to maybe you need to go to um, um, casting it out, letting it fall a little bit, lift up, let it fall a little bit, lift up, let it fall a little bit. All those things are important, but you need to be able to do that. Okay, that that's really really important. Lipless crankbait number one. Okay, number one. All right, number two. Uh, again, no in no particular order. Uh, I like to have, and I think you absolutely need to have a, a swim jig. You need to have some type of swim jig. This particular one is kind of a bluegill pattern, shell cracker pattern, whatever pattern. Um, all these, by the way, are good in white as well. Um, and, and in fact, a lot of times I actually had to have white. Uh, but this is a swim jig. Here's a couple of things about swim jigs that I, first of all, I want to say. I actually had a, um, somebody ask me about swim jigs, and this would be my chance to talk about them a little bit. Things to look for. I like the ones that come with a rattle, you know. You can get what you can get them with a rattle, and I like that. Um, I also think the type of keeper that they have is really important. This particular one's got a really oh, I'm out of the screen here. This particular one's got a really neat uh, keeper on it uh, that uh, that kind of just kind of digs into the plastic. Uh, use some use some uh, super glue if not super glue will work good. But you also want to have a big quality hook. You want to have it doesn't have to be a heavy hook per se, but you want a big quality hook. Um, and some manufacturers have better hooks than others. I know some of the some manufacturers actually will have a, uh, a a heavy cover hook and things like that. I don't do much with the weed guards on swim jigs. I have in the past with with uh, with jigs. I, I'll, I'll sometimes take the uh, take my scissors and I'll I'll trim it, you know, like that. But I don't do that necessarily all that much. And of course, the swim jig with a trailer. Uh, this particular trailer, uh, I like the paddle tail. I have gone with just a grub, just a straight twister tail. I've also gone with a straight, a fluke style tail. Um, I, I, and, and it just, I don't know how much it matters. You gotta get the fish to bite, period, the end. But you need a swim jig to do that. So, so swim jigs, critical, critical, critical. And, and, and it's just a deal with the bait. If the bite slows down, pick another one up, man. Pick something else up and, and go with that. Now, right in that same line with the, with the, swimming, uh, with the swim jig, it's just, just a flat out, a, a swim bait. You need to have a swim bait of some sort. Uh, you need to have something that you can throw a long ways. Um, that uh, uh, I usually throw my swim baits with a little bit of weight on them. There's a, there's a myriad of hooks out there. Uh, but, but, but you want a swim bait. You need to have a swim bait, a swim bait, a swim bait. And if you, if you have a swim bait, as long as it's a swim bait, then it's a swim bait. Oh, I'm being stupid now. Get, make sure you have a swim bait. So that's three. To, so, so far, we've got, just to sum up or to remind you, lipless crankbait. Swim jig and a, and a swim, uh, swim bait. Those those are three. But I've got a couple more here. Actually, I think I said five. Did I say five earlier? Cause I got six on <laughs> the thing here. Uh, so so I don't know why I said five, but I've got six. All right. Uh, here's the next one, and it looks like you know, there's some similarities in these things, and that's important for you to understand. Is there similarities? But they all have a little bit different signature in the water. This is, of course, a chatterbait, and uh, this particular one is is in the green. I a lot of times like a, a lot of times I'll use a white one again, but I like a small one. Uh, it's just me personally. I just feel like um, the, I, I like to go with smaller stuff anytime I can. The shad, oftentimes, you know, oftentimes the shad that we're dealing with on Okeechobee are just they're just little, they're just tiny, and so you know we, you want you want to be mindful of that, you know, and and uh, and and sometimes I like a small. One. But I usually go, I usually when it comes to swim jig, I or a, a chatterbait rather, um, I like I like a little bit smaller one. And uh, and and you should too, <laughs> but chatterbait, good one. Um, the other thing, uh, there, I've got two other here, and staying with the blades and, and whatnot for a minute. Um, of course, is is is, is, is spinnerbait. You need to have a spinnerbait. Um, I'm really partial to again. I want a white one. I will sometimes change this big blade out for a smaller blade. Um, I want sometimes. I, I like to have sometimes just two blades that are exactly the same size. But this is this is just what I had in the house. To kind of be able to shoot this for you. I will also put a trailer hook. In most situations, I'll put a trailer hook on this bait because I'm not throwing it in heavy cover. I'm usually whipping it a long ways, and uh, and it's it's not in heavy cover. But uh, I like. Uh, I, by the way, I really like this style. This is a war eagle, and I'm not selling a spinner bait here by any ch and any stretch because you can make the same skirt with any spinner bait. But I like when you grab the spinner bait, you get and you get you get the the longer portion of the skirt is below. I, I kind of dig that. I, I, I like that in a spinnerbait. Now, I'll tell you something else, too, they're making now is a quarter-ounce spinnerbait. Um, it's just the much smaller size spinnerbait. 
this isn't one, but this is a three eighths actually. But then they'll have extra weight on the back of it here and they'll make it a half ounce. And boy, you can throw it a long ways with small blades. You can just burn it like crazy. And, and, and that can be good. Now, I'm not recommending you burn a spinner bait because it's been my experience with a lot of these baits. You gotta kind of go slow with them. Um, now, somebody else may have had another experience, but I've had, I will tell you honestly, uh, I've had four experiences now with schooling fish and and, and they've been kind of on purpose experiences where I've kind of been looking for that with one eye as I'm fishing with another way. There have been times when I've been setting up in an area where shine it with shiners and you kind of keep an eye out for birds. Birds can be key as well uh, on these schooling fish. Uh, but anyway, the last one, the last one here that I want to talk about and uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the rigging too is is a swimming worm. And in this case, it's a, you know, it's that type of swimming worm. <laughs> Again, I'm not selling them any manufacturer, but um, I like that. I like that style of tail or something similar to that. But it's just a, it's a big heavy worm. This is a magnum. This is a larger worm. This is not a little worm. This is a pretty big heavy worm. I usually use it with a five aught hook. Um, I also a lot of times will throw it with a little eighth ounce weight, sometimes even a quarter ounce weight, um, you know, pegged to it uh, for casting distance and just to get it down a little bit. Um, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, I've seen this bait right here totally reignite a school of fish. Um, you know, the, the bite goes basically down to nothing. You throw this thing out there and you just kind of move it along slowly. You can just try, even drag it along a little bit, let it fall. And for whatever reason, it'll, it'll, it'll ignite the fish again. And when it does, and you can go back to, uh, you know, go back to a lipless crankbait or, or whatever. So just, just sum up six baits. <laughs> Six baits, not five. These are the same, and I, I have these on my deck. These, these are, I keep on my deck. Again, rattle trap, absolutely. Um, a swimming jig, absolutely. Swim bait, chatter bait, and dropping baits on the floor. And of course, spinner bait, and I, I drop that, I, I drop that one too. <laughs> Anyway, you those those are the six baits that you want to have in close proximity because when it happens, you want to get your trolling motor on high, you want to get to them, and you want to start throwing, making long casts, and uh, and those are the baits. Those are the baits that you want to use um, anytime you're anytime that you think there might be a chance for a schooling pattern. Um, anytime, and I'm gonna tell you on Okeechobee, uh, from Clewiston all the way to Harney Pond as you as you're headed kind of north, I, it's, it's, I guess it's more east and north, but as you're heading north and east uh, and you get along that shoal outside of Cochran's and you're fishing, there's some great patterns. You can flip the, the, the grass out there. Uh, there's, there's a lot of pepper grass on the way up there. Pepper grass is a great way to catch fish, um, especially in the mornings, it seems like, it, with a swim jig and all that kind of stuff. But as you're fishing those patterns, you kind of keep over your shoulder, you kind of you keep, keep looking. A lot of times it's visual and not something you hear. Um, because it might be far enough away looking for birds. You see two or three birds and they seem to be concentrating in one area and all of a sudden one of them hits the surface. You probably need to get on your motor and get there. All right. Um, that, that's my tip for, for uh, setting yourself up for, for success when it comes to dealing with schooling fish on Lake Okeechobee. Uh, lake report on the Big O. I was out there today. I had two trips actually. I had a shiner trip this morning. Uh, we caught, I had three young men with me. We had a blast. Uh, we caught uh, 26 fish, and uh, that was on a four-hour trip. And then later on this afternoon, I had a trip uh, where I took just another young man. And uh, actually, I'm sorry. Very long, typical. Um, and and, uh, and we, uh, we actually just artificial fished, and, and, uh, and we got on them. We, we both missed quite a few fish. But I, I want to say that, again, clean water, hayfield type stuff. Um, and, and actually, I caught several, had caught several fish on, on an Ica. Um, I, half ounce weight, or uh, actually I think it was a quarter ounce weight, I went a little bit lighter, and pitching the Icas into the open pockets on the grass. If you go to my website, daveschneiderfishing.com, I actually have a video on there um, that, uh, that actually shows how to approach fishing the hayfield patterns and pitching baits into the hayfield. Um, and so that's a great visual on that. Go over to my website and hit that video um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're not really sure what I'm talking about. Anyway, guys, hey, it's a guide's life. It's my life. Thanks for sharing it. And I will see you tomorrow.